Welcome to this week's video tutorial on the DJPodcast.com. In this video, we'll be going over how to create beat grids in Native Instruments Tractor. So if you have your tractor set up that tracks are automatically analyzed when you import them into Tractor, you will most likely have a beat grid set for your track, but it might not necessarily be correct. So let's go through how you can create your own beat grid. If you don't have this panel up here, you're going to want to check it or click on this little arrow and that will open up the advanced options for the deck and you're going to want to make sure that if it's set to Q to begin with that you go to the grid option and we're just going to run through what these different buttons are so you can see here that there's the BPM value in the middle if you just analyze your tracks you may see that tractor gets very close but is off most of the times you're going to have a whole value unless there's usually some sort of drift or whatnot in the track. So here we have the BPM and we can just click on this and change it. If it's wrong and we know what the value is, we can just enter it there. Let's just go over these uh, buttons, I guess. So here we have move the grid to the left. Here we have move the grid to the right. Here is increase the BPM, decrease the BPM, lock the beat grid once we're done. You also have the ability to divide or multiply the BPM by two. Now this happens if you know you have your BPM detection range is off and uh, you've got a track that's obviously incorrect you can just simply multiply that or divide it. You can also set a beat grid which we'll talk about in a second. Delete a, a beat marker. You can go and just auto beat grid the track and you can reset it to what it was before. Additionally you can tap the tempo if you have you know an acapella or something like that that you need to tap the tempo out to or if the BPM detection is incorrect. So the important thing here is that you have a usually a whole value here as your BPM and that you set the first beat marker at the right spot. Now let me explain why this works. This track here is at 138 BPM the entire way through, which it probably is. Unlike Ableton where you can add additional warp markers, that you know really easily tractor does things a little bit differently it thinks that whenever you put the beat marker down that from there to the end of the track is going to be the same tempo all the way through and that's why it's so important to put the first beat marker in the right spot now you can adjust where these markers are if it's a little bit off but you want to make sure that you get as close to the, to the right spot as possible now I've already gotten a point here that I feel like is the closest spot. But if you were just starting off, what you would do is you would click and drag in this area here until you hear the very first beat or the first sound. So we'll just do that really quickly. You can hear that it's right, right at the very beginning there. And what we're going to do is we're going to click this button here. It looks like a little triangle with a stick on the bottom. And we're going to click that. And you can see now that we have these white lines that line up directly with the beat. Now, if I get rid of that marker, you'll see that there's there are these thin white lines here, but they're not on the beat. And that's because those markers are what Tractor thinks are the beats. It's not a beat marker. It's what Tractor thinks are the beats. And obviously, you can see that it estimated them incorrectly. So once again, I'll just click the insert beat grid marker and you can see that they snap right to the beginning of the beat. That is essentially what we want. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scrub through a little bit to see if there are any uh, of these grid markers that are off. So let's just scrub through a little bit. Okay, so now we've scrubbed through about 15 seconds into the track and you can see that this marker here and this marker here are off. It's hard to see a little bit. Oh, you can all see these two and these two are off. Um, because of the color scheme, which I really hope the Native Instruments fixes. But what we're going to do is we're going to click this button here to move those markers to the right. So we'll click here and you can see that when we click, it doesn't just affect one. It usually affects a couple grids, a couple of these beat markers at a time. So now we've got things aligned and we'll just scroll through a little bit more to see if there's any others that are off. 
So what we're going to do is we'll just sort of jump through the track here and look to see if any of the beats are still off now that we have, you know, gone back and adjusted it just a little bit. So it might be off a little bit here. We'll just jump to the end and we'll see if everything is all right. And you can see here at the end of the track that we have all of these grids in the right spot. Now I should mention that if you have a track that does does vary its BPM, like if there's BPM changes or drifts throughout the track, you can insert an, another, uh, you can insert as, I mean, as many of these markers as you want. So let's say, for example, that right here at the two minute mark, there is a drift right at this grid here. You can simply just import, or you can, uh, not import, you can simply insert, I should say, another um, beat marker, and then you can set that section of the track so that it's correctly in time. And then if you notice that there's another drift, you can adjust and add more markers as you go. Now, when you're done with your beat grid, you want to make sure that you don't change it in any way, because if you change it, you could potentially, without knowing it, load it into your uh, into your decks here and play it, thinking that it's in sync when really the beat grids are all off. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lock this beat grid. What you'll see is that the BPM is locked and you cannot use any of these options. That also includes, if you go into the queue mode, you cannot create a new queue point that is a grid point. So I just figured that I should mention that as I, fi you know, I uh, learned that when you have this lock here, you can also see in your browser when you have a track that is locked. So if you're like me, someone that's new to Tractor, but you already have a very large music collection, it's a really easy way to see which tracks have been beat gridded correctly and which ones haven't. If you go through, you can simply just see, oh, you know, these two mixes of the song have been beat gridded. This one has not, so I shouldn't play this track.